Revelation chapter 20, and then we'll read verse 4. So what is going on currently is that the Lord Jesus Christ, He is reigning for a thousand years in the millennium. Because He is reigning finally as King of kings and Lord of lords, and then all the enemies are at His feet now. They have to bow down and they have to worship Him. And it goes on for a thousand years long, and then I mentioned to you before as proof text that it is literally a thousand years. It's not figurative, it's literal. God repeated this six times when you read that passage. Now, who's going to be reigning is there's going to be two groups. One group over here will be the church age saints. So the Christian church, they'll be worshiping God and reigning with Him. And then the other people who will also reign with Him are tribulation saints. These two groups of people are promised the reign of God's millennial kingdom. Now, how we can see that is when we look at that verse over there, it describes two groups of people. Look at that. It says in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, And I saw thrones, right? So there are thrones being set up. And they sat upon them. People are sitting on the thrones, and judgment was given unto them. Okay, so notice that there's already a group of people who sit on the thrones, and they're judging. But then look at this. He sees another group. And I saw the souls of them. So John sees who? Souls of them. Who are them? That were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. See, the tribulation saints who lost their heads being a witness for Jesus during the tribulation and for the word of God. So they were a witness for Jesus and for his word and which had not worshipped the beast. They didn't worship the beast, obviously, neither his image. They didn't endorse his image, his idol. <clears throat> neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. So they did not receive the mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Notice, and they lived and reigned with Christ. So notice that these people who lost their heads, these tribulation saints who did not endorse the worship of the Antichrist, they reigned with Christ a thousand years. So did you see that? So basically verse 4, John sees, right, I saw, these group who's got the judgment, who's ruling on thrones. And then he says, I saw again. He's seeing a different group of people who are what? Tribulation saints. And they're ruling too. Ah, so then the first group, go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. So then we already see over here that the first group in Romans chapter 20 is referring to the tribu uh, not tribulation, excuse me. It's referring to the Christian church. The Christian church. All right, so let's look at Romans chapter 8. Notice that we are promised judgment as well. So I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to look at two places. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and then Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 shows that when we serve Christ, then we are going to reign. Amen. And then it shows over there that if you are a saved person, you're going to be given judgment. You're going to judge people, actually. All right, so let's start off with Romans chapter 8. And notice that that's why Christians have to suffer. They have to serve Him, because if you don't, then you're not going to receive rain. Look at Romans chapter 8. And notice what the Bible says at verse 17. Verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and look at this, join heirs with Christ. Now remember, these people at Revelation 20 are with who? They're with Christ. They reign with Christ. So they are joint heir with Christ, but look at this. Keep reading. If so be that we suffer with him. See that? also glorified together because they suffer for him. 
Now, tribulation saints, it's taken for granted they will suffer anyway. That's why they're automatically given reign and rulership over here. But the Christian church, I wonder how many of us go through suffering for him, right? So that's why it's important that we, um, like you heard from today's sermon, accept reality of the suffering and problem you go through. Because if you do that, it's not only going to give you joy and peace because you're prepared for it and you trust God, but also because you're going to reign with Jesus Christ. So it is important to do that. All right, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and then let's see what the Word of God reads over here. Notice that the text says that we have to judge the world. The world. As a matter of fact, we're even going to be judging the fallen beings, the angels. That's how much power we got, church. Man, when you became a saved Christian, that's not something you take lightly. You got incredible power, man. Do you know how many people work so hard just to become a judge yeah. in, a, in, a, in a city or a local community area? I mean, they, they spend like uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, years and years and years. You just get it for free in one shot like that and you receive Christ for salvation. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse 15. Verse 15. But he that is spiritual, what? Judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. So notice over here that uh, we are given judgment. Why? Because we have the mind of Christ. Keep reading at verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But what we have the mind of Christ. So notice over here that the Lord God himself, he gives us power to judge everything around us. So don't take what you have for granted. It is a very powerful uh, gift and salvation that the Lord has given to us. So we should never take things lightly what he has given to us. All right, we're also going to go back to Revelation chapter 20, please. We're going to go back to Revelation chapter 20. So we can see that there are two groups of people who will be reigning with the Lord God Himself, and those are tribulation saints one. And then the second group of people is going to be referring to us Christians. Now, live for Him as best as you can because you don't have much time. Yeah. Let's just say that. You don't have much time. So live the remaining years that you have for Him. So because these are the people who will reign with Him, verse 5 says... But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Okay, so then there's a bunch of dead people who did not resurrect yet. So they're still in their graves. And then they did not live again until what? The thousand years were finished. Now it says rest of the dead. Did you read that over there? It says rest of the dead. So then there's like another resurrection going on over here. If you read that text, it mentions that this is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead live not again until this is finished. When this is finished, notice over here, this is the first resurrection. Why? Because 4. Did you read verse 4? Reigned with God. You see that? That's your first resurrection. If you read the next part of verse 6, it says, Blessed and holy is he. So you're blessed. You're considered holy. Uh, that hath part in the first resurrection. Why? So you're blessed. You have part in the first resurrection. Because it says the next part, keep reading the last part of verse 6, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Ah, so look at it. These people become priests of God, priests of Christ, and they reign with Him a thousand years. And when you look back at verse 4, the souls of them that were beheaded reigned with Christ a thousand years. So we know then that this is referring to the first resurrection over here. So the first resurrection is referring to the tribulation saints who died for Jesus, but then they get resurrected, and then they reign with Christ. That's something you got to understand. Amen. Now, it mentions that there is a second death. Uh, on such, the second death has no power. 
So the second death, we obviously know what that is. That is hell, right? So the damnation of hell. And such the second death has no power. So then it seems like, okay, read that verse again. Blessed are you if you're part of the first resurrection, right? Why? So that you don't have, uh, so that this doesn't have power over you. Whoa, wait a minute then. Then that means there's another resurrection that hell does have power over them. See? This is the first resurrection. Why would it say first? Because there's a second one. The second resurrection, it will be referring to this one. Okay, go to Daniel 12. Daniel 12. And then Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. We're going to go to Daniel chapter 12. And I think I'm out of bounds. Just let me know when I'm out of bounds, okay? You're good, preacher. Alrighty. So, second resurrection is referring to the lake of fire. Alright, if I'm out of bounds, just let me know. All right. The, the first resurrection then is referring to the saved. And then the second resurrection is referring to the lost. That's the idea. That's the distinguishing with first and second resurrection. So Daniel chapter 12. Notice verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. See, there's a resurrection. They get resurrected from their dead bodies. Some to everlasting life. See that? Remember, blessed and holy is he, and they reign with Christ. So we can see that here. That makes sense, right? Let's keep reading. And some to what? Shame and everlasting contempt. That's hell. Now go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. All right, we're going to get into some dispensationalism here, so this will be fun. And then I got the cream of the crop uh, right after, okay? But let's do this one first. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 46. Notice the language here matches with Daniel 12. Matthew 25 verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into what? Life eternal. So notice over here, uh, what is this timeline? Timeline is, I don't know if you remember this chapter, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory. Verse 31. So notice over here, that's when Jesus Christ is coming down to reign, that this all happens. All right. Now, Matthew 25, what you're going to notice, I'm going to give you a category here. If you look at Matthew 25, you'll notice that at verse 31, that's when Jesus Christ comes down to reign, right? But then at verse 32, notice he's gathering all the nations together. Why? To judge them. Okay, so what's going on is this, all right? So then what's going on is when Christ comes down, he's going to have what is called judgment of nations. You want to know that one. So there's a judgment called judgment of nations, actually. Now, in judgment of nations, this is different from the Christians. Remember, the Christians are judged called the judgment seat of Christ. Do you remember that? We studied that at Revelation 19. Now, in judgment of nations, this is where he's judging those who are saved or lost over here. Saved or lost. During this judgment of nations, what's going to happen is he's going to judge those who survived and lived through the tribulation. And then he's also going to uh, have the dead bodies resurrected. Remember the tribulation saints, uh, these people, uh, they lost their bodies and they died. So then God's going to make sure to resurrect them. Now here's the thing though. The thing is, is that the timeline here is kind of uh, funny because remember we talked about that uh, there was a rapture in the tribulation, right? So then let's put uh, the tribulation timeline over here. If we put the tribulation timeline over here, and then they got raptured, remember I talked about that? They're joining for the marriage supper of the Lamb? Yeah. Do you recall that? Okay, now this becomes a little bit confusing here. If they're raptured up to heaven, 
then why is it that there is a first resurrection over here? Shouldn't their bodies already be raptured, right? So then why is it over here that they have a resurrection going on over here with their bodies resurrected? This becomes very confusing. So uh, I'm going to give a few answers over here which might be kind of interesting. So then first of all, if you go back to uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, go back to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Remember this, the key answer, that way you don't get confused. A lot of people get confused with the timing over here because they automatically assume, remember, Revelation is in chronological order. So remember, re the book of Revelation is never in chronological order. You got to remember that the book of Revelation, John is reveal things at random. So he's seeing all these things. So remember, it's not in a particular timeline. John is getting different revelations. He's getting one revelation of people partaking in the millennium. And then he has a different revelation where what? He's seeing the marriage supper of the Lamb. See? So with these different revelations, he's going to see things differently and they don't have to be timed together. Okay, so what is he seeing? He's simply seeing over here in the millennium that Oh, there are people who are resurrected and they reign with Christ. That's simple. He didn't say that this resurrection took place before the second advent and that it had to take place uh, right at the millennium. He didn't say that at all. He's just short telling you what he saw. He saw people resurrecting and reigning with Christ. That's it. So this first, what does that mean? That means this first resurrection could have happened over here then, see? Where they're being raptured. He just simply sees them resurrected and then later on reigning with Christ. Because remember, it's a revelation. If you look at revelation, everything John sees, a lot of things happen during that time. It's not one single event together, one single timeline. So you have to think like that way. Over here, what he's seeing is, He's seeing tribulation saints who got raptured up to heaven, which is Revelation 14. They're all up in heaven. And then 19, they're all partaking in the marriage supper with him. That's all he's seeing. He didn't see which timeline that it's fitting in. He never said that. Okay, so let's look at Matthew chapter 24. Notice over here that when Jesus comes, that there's a rapture afterwards. See that? Look at Matthew chapter 24. Verse 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen. So notice over here, this is Jesus Christ coming down, right? But look what happens. Look at verse 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one he end of heaven to the other. Look at this one. This is a rapture of tribulation saints. So look, look at the, if we go by chronological order in Matthew 24, it should be this first, then this after, right? But notice we have this first and this after. See that? Now, you know that contradicts because look at Revelation 19 now, okay? So let's compare all three. So Matthew 25 has this one after this one. And then we see Revelation 20 where this one happens after this one, and then look at Revelation 19, which we read before. Look at Revelation 19. Look at verse 9. He saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So notice that these people are what? Called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And look at this, verse 14, they're arrayed in white garments, right? Clean and white. Now look at verse 14. The armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Okay, so notice over here that the people at verse 9, they have white raiment. And then verse 14, uh, they follow him on the horses. That's this one, right? Following him on horses. And they're wearing white garments over here. So we see us in here. And then, look at this. This gets confusing. Go to Matthew 25. 
See, you can't put this in chronological order. Go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Now, notice that this is the parable of the tribulation timeline. Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto what? Ten what? Virgins. Uh, remember, 144,000 virgins at Revelation 7. And then Revelation 14, they're up there. Now look at this. Are they partaking in the marriage? Yeah, they do. They partake in the marriage and went forth to meet the what? Bridegroom. Not only that, you got Revelation 7 where they're dressed. So see, they're partaking in the marriage. So notice they partook in the marriage and they come down with him. Okay, uh, so then the tribulation saints undoubtedly, they have to be up here. One thing we do know is this. You have to wear white garments when you're coming down, right? Oh, that the marriage supper is before, right? Yeah. Okay, that much we know. Now let's work this out, okay? What we know is marriage supper is before this one. We can agree with that, right? Based on Revelation 19, based on uh, Matthew 25 and other passages. Amen. Okay, if that's the case, the tribulation saints, according to Matthew 25, Revelation 14, Revelation chapter 7, and I think Revelation 16 too, they have to be raptured up to heaven, raptured, and partake in the marriage supper, correct? Yeah. yeah, okay, so then they have to do that. And that means this rapture timeline has to be during here, correct? Okay, that's it then. Now, is the, resur uh, is the millennial reign, is this after Jesus Christ comes down? Yeah. And we come down, yes, because we read that. Otherwise, how can he, if you put this reign before he comes down, then Jesus really didn't do a good job, okay, of conquering his enemies and reigning. So we know the rain has to be after this. Now, true in Scripture, now we see the timeline here. So then when we read the other passages, see, remember this, the authors, when they're talking about a revelation they're seeing, they're jumping timelines. Or they have no respect of timelines. They'll make it better sometimes. That's dispensationalism. If you don't believe in that doctrine, you're going to come across error. Now let me give you an example. Okay, go to Genesis. Let me give you an example. Go to the book of Genesis. So dispensationalism, you have to be aware, timelines can go backwards or it can be fuzzy. Why? Because that's what prophecy is. Genesis chapter 49. Genesis 49. Revelation is a book of prophecy, right? Yeah. Prophecy, even pagan guys who give prophecies and divinations, they don't put, all, they don't put it in a neat timeline. It's just all fuzzy things that they see that's all jumbled up together. That's what you understand. If you're talking about end times, that's a book of prophecy. And it's obviously all going to be jumbled up together. It's not going to be in clean order. But those who are very good in interpreting prophecy, even law secular people, uh, unsaved divination, etc., etc., they claim that the one who has more wisdom is those who are unraveling. Who has that gift? We do. We believers have that gift of unraveling prophecy because uh, we already studied it a couple weeks ago that th we have a sure word of prophecy in our hand and no scripture is of any private interpretation. Amen. So you can find it out for yourself. How do you do that? All you have to do is look at scripture with scripture and then you see which piece of the puzzle you can lay down first, lay down here, lay down here, and then you can find the text and put it in. Now, Look at Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. Look at verse 8. Verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Look at verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. That's Jesus Christ reigning as king. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Why? That's the millennium, right? Uh-oh, but look backwards now. Look at verse 11. It's backwards. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass colt unto the choice vine. Wait, Jesus Christ was riding on a donkey, right? That's, that was what, 2,000 years backward? See, so it should be common knowledge to understand that 
within prophecy. Now, was Jacob giving a prophecy here? Yeah, so in prophecy, it's, he's not giving in uh, alphabetical order, timeline, numerical order, uh, uh, timeline order. No, he's not doing anything like that. It's all like this. It's all mingled. It's all mingled. 